Hello, I'm James Clark from King's College London, and in this short video I'm going to show you how to carry out survival analysis in GraphPad Prism. In order to carry out survival analysis and plot a Kaplan-Meier curve and look at survival differences between groups, you need to enter your data into a table compatible with survival analysis. Prism offers one such table. You can find this on the left-hand side of the welcome screen under Survival. When you choose Survival, you can choose whether to import or enter data into a new table or start with some handy sample data and follow a tutorial. Your second option is how you enter your date or time. The first choice is to enter the elapsed time as a number of days or months or of course weeks. The second option is to enter a start and ending date. For instance, if all of your samples haven't entered the study at the same time and there are different start and end dates for each sample, you may find this useful. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to enter or import data into a new table and enter our elapsed time as a number of days or months. Once you've selected these options, you can click Create. PRISM will then create a new data table, allowing you to enter your survival data. The key to handling survival data in GraphPad PRISM is to understand clearly how the data are entered. Each row on the table represents a distinct subject, and each column on the table either represents time elapsed in the X column, or treatment groups, for instance group A, group B and group C, could be three different drug treatments for which you're comparing the survival. So let's start with a very simple example. We have three subjects and we are looking at their survival over seven days. Let us suppose that one subject died on day three, one subject died on day six, and the third subject survived the full seven days of the study. To input these data into PRISM, you enter the time at which an observation was made in the X column against the observation in the Y column. If a subject died, you enter the number 1 in the Y column. And if the subject's information is censored, in other words, you don't know what happened afterwards or it doesn't matter for the purpose of the study, you enter a 0. So for our example, on day 3, one mouse died. So I enter 3 in the X and 1 in the Y. I can call this subject 1. Subject 2 died on day 6. So I place a 6 in the X axis and a 1 in the Y axis against subject 2. Our third subject, subject 3, on day 7, we know that this subject was not dead, so we cannot enter a 1. But since we know the subject was sampled at this time, we click 0 in the box. Now we have entered these data, PRISM will automatically calculate the survival data. You can find these data in the results section of the navigation pane on the left hand side. By clicking on survival, you can now see the percentage survival of our three subjects over our seven day period. We know that on day three one subject died, therefore two thirds of our population were still alive. We know that on day six another subject died, leaving just one third of our population. And on day seven, at the end of the study, one third of our population were still alive. You can now view these data as a graph and PRISM will automatically generate a Kaplan-Meier curve for your survival data. By clicking in the graph section of the navigation pane, you can view your graph. When you first click on this, PRISM will give you an option of how you want your graph to display. Of course, at the top in graph family, we want to choose survival. Underneath this, we have a choice of how we view our Kaplan-Meier curve. Traditionally, you would view your Kaplan-Meier curve as a step. However, you can choose in PRISM to view it in one of many different ways. Either joining the data points together, 
joining the data points with our standard error or 95% confidence intervals, by stepping our data with points at censored points, or showing how percentage death increases instead of percentage survival. And of course, you can show this in the same four ways. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to show it as a staircase. We're also going to show it as a percentage survival. We're also going to show all points. So every time a measurement was taken, it will show a small tick on our graph. I'm not going to show error bars, but at this time I could choose to show standard error or 95% confidence lines. I'm going to choose none. Of course, as in all graphs, you can choose to make this your default for future analyses. There are no other options on the graph type for survival curves, so once we're happy, we can click on OK. We can now see our survival data on the screen. Time is on the x-axis, and percentage survival is on the y-axis. Our survival curve clearly shows that on day 6 and day 7, we have a 33% survival. You can see the individual sampling points which are indicated by the slightly heavy line on the staircase curve. So that's a simple way of creating a survival curve in GraphPad Prism. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example and show how we can do the survival analyses. On the screen you can now see data from a more advanced study where we've got three groups of six subjects in a survival study under three different conditions. In order to correctly audit these data and make sure we have entered the right information, I have entered the subject numbers into each row on the data sheet. For instance, group A has subjects A1 through to A6, group B, B1 through to B6, and C from C1 to C6. It doesn't matter if you leave blank rows between these groups. In fact, that actually helps to organize your data a little bit better. Although in this example we only have six in each group, you can see how easy it would be to expand this to higher n numbers. As before in the simple demonstration, we then enter the information corresponding to each point that we need to plot on our survival curve. So focusing quickly at group A, on day three, four, four and seven, in other words, two subjects died on day four, I've entered ones into the Y column, representing the death of a subject. Subjects A5 and A6 were still alive on day 10, and therefore we have left their data censored and entered a zero and a zero, corresponding to no death by day 10. The same entry follows through for group B and group C. Group C in this synthetic data set were control subjects which weren't treated with anything. They all survived up to day 10. Entering data for 100% survival is very simple. Simply put the end point of your study and then enter a column of zeros corresponding to each of the subjects. In this way, PRISM will accurately calculate the percentage survival for each of your groups. We can look at that in our results table. You can see here that at each point where a sample has been taken, PRISM has calculated the percentage survival on each given day. We can view these data graphically under the graphs section of the navigation pane. Here we can see the results of this synthetic study showing group B, group A and our controls showing three different survival outcomes. You can of course change the way this graph looks at any time by going to the change menu and clicking on the graph icon. In this way you can change the way the data look, for instance showing your standard error or 95% confidence interval lines on your data set. We're going to show standard error bars and press OK. So now we may want to see how these three survival groups differ. To do this we head back to our results section and we will briefly focus on the other tabs within the results table. We've seen the first tab. This shows us our survival proportions, or percentage survival. In the second tab, we can see our number of subjects at risk. In other words, how many subjects remain in the study and are at risk of dying. 
This is a useful table to look at just to confirm that you've entered all of your data correctly in your data table. If you've missed some subjects, you'll see that very clearly here. The third tab is our curve comparison. On this panel, we can see the statistical analysis that are comparing our data sets. First up is a chi-squared test showing degrees of freedom and our p-value. And here we can see that our survival curves are indeed different. Underneath the chi-squared test, we have a log rank test and a Gay and Breslow Wilcoxon test, which also look at comparisons between our survival curves. Depending on your n number and complexity of data, PRISM will recommend which test it thinks you should be using to compare your data. While these analyses compare more than two datasets, you might also want to obtain the pairwise comparisons between any two given datasets. So in this example, we might want to compare control with group A. To do this, I can highlight our group B column and on my keyboard press Command E or Control E or right click and choose Exclude Values. This whole dataset now is excluded from both analysis and plotting. To confirm, we go back to our graph, and now we just see the data from control and group A. And in our survival results, the only two data being compared are our control and group A. In our curve comparison now, you can see the Gay and Breslow Wilcoxon test shows a p value of 0.02 showing that these two groups are significantly different. We can now see other information such as 95% confidence intervals and hazard ratio for our data sets. So once you've carried out these analysis and understood the relevance of your statistical tests, you can annotate your graph accordingly and produce this figure for publication or presentation. And hopefully using this guide, you should be able to enter data from your study to understand survival. Thank you.